given the current state of things, you're probably finding yourself at this point in time working in ways that maybe you've never worked before. And that includes probably these massive video calls where you're doing Zoom meetings or hangouts or something like that with people and working on machines maybe you're not used to working on and spaces you're not completely used to working on. And for some of you, using files and operating systems you're not completely familiar with working on. And so, Thankfully, there is a service called Remote Desktop, and there's lots of different remote desktops that you could use, but Google has made one that's super easy to set up called Chrome Remote Desktop. It's been around for years, and they've recently updated it to where it's almost completely a web-based portal that you can basically control a remote computer from. So if you've got a device that sits at your office and has some files on it that you would really like to have access to on an ongoing basis, but you don't have something you can just pick up and take home, this is a way that you can actually hook up to that computer, completely control it, do whatever you need to do, send files, send emails. You can do whatever you want on that remote device right from any device that you have in front of you because you don't have to just have a Chromebook. This is Chrome Remote Desktop. So if you have a device that will run Chrome, a MacBook, a Windows device, any of those things. It will run Chrome Remote Desktop. So we want to go through and show you how to simply set this up so that you can begin accessing your stuff at your office while you're stuck at home. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of users because they're awesome at what they do. And that's keeping your browsing secure and safe whether you're at home or out and about. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to learn more and get started today. All right, again, this is super simple, but we wanna take you step by step through how to get it set up. And one of the requirements you have to have is the device that you are remoting into. So the host device does need to be a Windows or Linux or Mac machine. So there's a little bitty thing you gotta download and install. It's basically the host controller. There are ways to make it work on a Chromebook. I, we don't advise that. The benefit of Chrome OS is that you log into whatever Chromebook you've got and use your stuff. So that's a benefit for us Chromebook users. This is for those of you who are stuck using a Windows or MacBook, or something like that at work and can't get that thing out of that office and bring it physically with you. This gives you the ability to do that. So for Chromebook users, there's really no need. So let's hop in. If you go to remotedesktop.google.com, uh, it's gonna take you to this forward slash access you see up here in the URL bar, but that's, that's where you're gonna land is right here. We wanna do remote access and we're gonna set that up and we're just gonna click this download. You'll see this very tiny MSI file download when it is done, you're gonna click on it and it is going to install and that's it. Uh, give it just a second, yes. And we'll just make sure that that's all done. Okay, so once it is done and in place, you'll see this show up here. It just says choose name. We're just basically naming this so that if you happen to set this up on multiple computers, you know which one you're going to access. So we're gonna call this Surface Go. We'll hit next. We're gonna choose a pin. I'm gonna choose something super simple here. Uh, I would recommend you choose something a little more personal to you or something you're gonna obviously remember. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, that's not what I would recommend doing. And then we're gonna hit start. And what this does now is it starts a remote session. Um, I'm not gonna save that password. It starts a remote session with this computer so that I can remote into it on any other device. Now you can return to the remote desktop.google.com after you've done all this setup to kind of see the status of your remote computer to see if it's online and ready to accept remote connections or not, but you're not gonna have to go through all of the setup and then install process again in the future. It's just kind of there and ready to go whenever you need it. And it's important to note as you think about your use case for this, how you're gonna handle your remote host computer. So if you're gonna leave this thing at the office and it's gonna be sitting there all the time, you can't let it turn off or go completely to sleep. Now it can go to its lock screen and that's fine, but anything that would kind of cause the whole thing to shut down basically or hibernate or any of those kind of things, you're gonna have to avoid those. So depending on your device, you need to go into your settings and make sure it's set to when it's plugged in or whatever. It can go to the lock screen, that's fine, but don't let it go to sleep or completely turn itself off or else you're gonna be at home trying to remote in and this thing's never going to wake up, it's never gonna come online. Another thing you wanna consider also is how you handle your lock screen. So this particular Windows device has Windows Hello, so it unlocks by looking at my face. Well, 
in a remote session, your face isn't going to be in front of the screen. So you probably want to turn that off for the time being. If you know the use case for this computer is going to be remoting into it, turn that off and make it a pin or make it a password to log in, lock your screen, make sure Chrome remote desktop's running and you can kind of leave it there, leave it plugged in and it can kind of stay secure and locked down, but still on and ready for you to access from your remote computer, which could be again, a Chromebook, Windows device or MacBook. So let's move over now to this Chromebook and show you how easy it is. Now that you've got all that stuff out of the way, how easy it is to go through and actually hop onto this particular device. So again, on this device, I'm going to go to remotedesktop.google.com. Over on the right side, you're going to make sure that your, uh, your account that you've picked is the same account you have Chrome Remote Desktop set up on. So I can't have the account set up over here on one Google account and then go and try to log in with another. It's obviously all synced via your Google account. So once that is done and you're ready to go, obviously you're going to see right up at top your remote devices that you can go into and click anywhere on this and it's going to start that remote session. Now it's going to ask for the pin that we created. One, two, three, four, five, six is what we made. I'm going to go and tell it to remember the pin on this device and we're going to go to log in and there you see it. We've got the actual screen from the Surface Go right here. Two finger scroll works. I can scroll around. I can move around. Um, and then you have this flyout menu over here that does a lot of cool things. So we can go full screen, obviously. We can scale it to fit, which we're kind of already doing, resizing it to fit. And you can tell the, the Surface Go screen is a three by two screen. So there's some letterboxing kind of going on here. If you want to get real fancy, you can actually go in and change the resolution to a 16 by nine format on the remote computer or whatever format you're using for your device that you're using to actually remote in. Make sure those, you know, dimensions match. So the, the pixel book goes a 16 by nine. If I make 16 by nine, the default resolution and default aspect ratio on the surface go, it will actually fill this entire screen. You can change the resolution. Again, you have full control over that remote computer. So when I go in here, I'm not looking at some modified settings. I'm looking at the settings that are on that device. So you can kind of change some of your settings to fit whatever it is you need to do. It may just be you're going in here to get a few files. You don't need to mess with this full screen thing. Uh, it's completely up to you, but you have this pop out menu that allows you to do any of these things. You can enable clipboard synchronization, hit begin, and you can actually, and I've tested this, you can copy and paste from your Windows desktop to your Chrome OS desktop. It's kind of cool. Uh, and it gives you some input controls down here, some stuff that you can do. Um, you can look at all your displays and you can actually do some file transfers right in this, uh, in this setup as well. If you're using Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that, you obviously don't really need to use that. For most people, it's going to be about getting in here and being able to manipulate controls on the host computer. And just as you'd expect, I can go in here and I can open up anything. I can do anything I need. And the lag is exceptionally good. I mean, this is completely usable. Um, I've watched some videos over it and you know, frame rates are good enough that if I, I don't, wouldn't suggest you do that, but it can be done. So that means a lot of work can actually happen over this remote connection if you need to. And a kind of advanced tip for, again, any operating system, you can actually throw this window into its own virtual desk and you can do this on Windows, you can do this on Mac OS, you can do this on Chrome OS. Work on your, you know, your Chrome OS desktop over here and then swipe four fingers over and have your Windows desktop in this virtual desktop. So that's kind of a nice separator for when you need to go back and forth between uh, different desktops and different operating systems. But that's it. I mean, that's as simple as it is. When you're done, uh, you can go back to uh, your remote session and you're finished up. You can actually click this X to get out of full screen and right up here at the top, you just click disconnect and boom, you're out. But your host computer is still sitting there online, ready for you the next time you need to log in. Guys, we really hope that stuff like this, especially in a time like we're in that is like no other, is helpful to you. Uh, if it is, give us a like down there. Make sure and hit subscribe so you can be updated when we make new videos just like this. And don't hit, forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you can get alerted. And also hit that join button while you're down there. You can see all the stuff that our members get like custom emojis and behind the scenes stuff. Till next time, we'll see you.